Good morning, Bitcoin. We're back live again from the Baltic Honey Badger Conference in Riga, Latvia. Today, Max and I are joined by Kevin and Felix, and we're going to talk about Bitcoin and conferences. Uh, so first of all, Kevin, uh, what's your background? Uh, what kind of Bitcoin conferences have you been working on lately? All right. So, um, yeah, on the conference uh, side of thing, I've been uh, co-organizing uh, breaking Bitcoin in Paris last year um, with uh, Elizabeth Stark and a guy called Pierre, uh, who is usually in the shadows. And uh, this year we organized Building on Bitcoin, uh, also known as Bob, uh, in Lisbon uh, with Pierre. And uh, for next year, we're going to have another Breaking Bitcoin. So we plan on like alternating uh, once every two years, just because we don't want to get people tired of one specific topic. Uh, so yeah, Breaking Bitcoin 2, um, April, somewhere in Europe. Uh, we don't know yet where so yeah breaking bitcoin was a wonderful conference last year not only did i get my first chance to go to paris which was wonderful uh, but also my friend jj actually broke bitcoin uh, so that was very exciting although many people didn't want him to break bitcoin and there was a lot of debate and discussion about that and felix you're a world traveler uh, what do you think of the bitcoin conferences do you have a favorite or something you remember from them um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been to way too many conferences for sure, but uh, I've already seen them all. Um, I, like, I like that the fact that we have so many, that you have a lot of to choose them. And I like the fact that they're also global, like you have uh, some in Latin America, North America. Um, scaling is moving around a lot on like, um, uh, continents. Uh, breaking is moving around in Europe. So I really like the fact that because not everybody has a, the chance to like travel mm -hmm. to all of these places, um, even though uh, I think financial crypto is something that they, they do it like uh, they do like island hopping in the Caribbean islands. So that sounds nice. Uh, beaches, beaches, beaches. <laughs> yeah, um, there, there's definitely not a shortage of conferences, I think, as, at this point. Um, but I think we, we need to like keep the topics interesting, right? Because um, you don't want to go to ICO scam fest. No, no. I think those I, I I have a feeling that like we were gonna see less of them, but I could be wrong about that. I've been wrong about that in the past, uh, but these bubbles uh, sometimes can can uh, seem to continue longer than you would expect. Well, you know what P.T. Barnum said: "There's a sucker born every minute, and two on Tuesday." So <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, when I go to these conferences, I also use them just like to connect with people. I usually watch the, most of the talks like later if they're hopefully like recorded and live streamed. Um, um, yeah, and then just like to connect some people, right? Because they have some people like, um, for instance, the, the FOMO guys, they building uh, the Lightning Hack Days in Berlin. Uh, and, um, and now they will also want to expand to other cities like uh, I think Hong Kong and New York are going to be next. Uh, so getting these people together like because uh, um, is, 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 I think, something like so so we can all network together so i think um because th there's a lot of building stuff happening but you need to like get the right people to like connect to each other and that's uh, even though we all like connected on twitter somehow like sometimes we like meeting in real life is actually something that is helpful and a lot of like nerds me myself used to like underestimate because i was just hanging out in online rc forums uh, um rc chats and um yeah but like getting together in real life is i think important Exactly. I, I once told a friend of mine that I'd be fine just live streaming Burning Man. And then it turned out that it's probably better to go there and experience it for yourself. And uh, definitely with so many conferences and so many scam fests going on, uh, you're giving away my secrets here that I hang out in the back and that I try to meet people at conferences. I rarely see the speakers. I haven't seen any speeches at this conference. I prefer to go and to interview people. And as well, after the conference, when we go out at night and you really get to meet people, even if you don't drink, the Bitcoin community is very inclusive. People just want to hang out and talk to you about Bitcoin. And everywhere else in the world, you can get no one to talk about Bitcoin. Uh, but at these special conferences, they'll talk your ear off. Uh, programmers, the new people, the old people, everybody. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. So. Uh, Kevin, what was your favorite part about the conference, or do you have any special memories recently? Yeah. Um, about this one, or any? Any, any of them, yeah. Uh, yeah, so JJ at Breaking <laughs> Bitcoin uh, was yeah, actually yeah, interesting, yeah. and they just been uh, today um, on Twitter, uh, again, a, a massive argument about that. So it's it's been a year, and people are still arguing about it. 
Uh, so great stuff. That's uh, that's for sure. That's a big, uh, at least an important uh, memory. I'm not sure it's a good one, but it's an important one. It was uh, very dramatic. I remember Elizabeth Stark angrily asking questions and then Peter Todd in the back uh, seeming to take him apart legally, uh, seeing if he knew the standards and the proper methods for a disclosure of a bug like that. And uh, JJ was like, yeah, I told some people and I told some Bitcoin devs. And I think Peter brought up again, as Peter likes to do, a killer point when he's like, what about all the other projects that are built on Bitcoin who might be uh, subject to the same bug who are learning about it right now on the Breaking Bitcoin live stream? Uh, it was a very exciting and fun moment last year. Uh, Max, what about you? Do you have a favorite conference moment or how many con have you been to a lot of conferences? Well, the thing is, unfortunately, I could not travel to a lot of these conferences. And that's why I always stress the importance of recording the talks and the lectures, because that gives the opportunity not just for the people attending at the point in time at the specific location, but for an eternity, everyone in the entire world has access to this information. And that is key. That is so important. So I did watch all these conferences <laughs> online. Also good that you can 2x the speed, so you know get even more content. Uh, but there is no 2x. Well, then do point uh, 1.75. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's okay as well. <laughs> but uh, the cool thing is that uh, when you then are physically at this location, you can, as you said, talk to the people, connect to the people, and uh, engage in interesting debates and discussions. And then afterwards, watch a recording on 1.75. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the way to go. I know I meet a lot of people at the conventions and they all say, why are you talking so slowly? And it's because they're used to listening to me on 2x or faster speeds. Uh, so people are way more into that than I thought they'd be. And even I'm into it now when I listen to audiobooks, I always found them boring. But at one and a half speed, I'm making good progress in the book. I'm walking around, I'm cleaning the house, I'm doing other things, and I'm still getting some kind of information and maybe even some jokes and some humor. Uh, so Kevin, what are you guys working on in the future for Breaking Bitcoin? You say you don't have a location yet. Uh, should we start offering? Is there a couch available out there for me? Let's, let's choose the location based on where I have the most couches available to me. Uh, yeah, so one thing, please stop contacting us about locations. Um, thank you, we really like you know everybody and stuff it's it's nice to help but locations um we need to think about it and everybody wants of course us to go to their city um most of the conference organizer in bitcoin are not doing it for money we're doing it actually because we don't have money so how to meet all the cool people well just bring them to your own city organize a conference um but yeah so now we have to look into going to other cities as well because people are going to bitch about it otherwise um so yeah please don't contact us about that uh, and i was thinking when you said more bitches maybe for bub too we can do like bitcoin and bitches or something like that <laughs> could be fun um but as yeah, long as it's not bit shares but yeah oh yeah um but yeah for breaking two um topic will be the same about like focusing on hardcore security um, it will be very fun because now we have actual layer two that are deployed, uh, especially Lightning, that people are all excited about and putting a lot of money in, in the mainnet. And nobody's like researching the security. We're trying to make sure that it actually works before we make sure it's secure. And I think breaking will be very, very interesting for that. And people will be a bit scared, maybe. It's funny that you call it Breaking 2 because there's actually a movie called Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. It's about, <laughs> it's about breakdancing and it's one of those classic jokes that people always make. And I, of course, I've seen Breaking 1 and Breaking 2. Uh, but let's go to Felix. Do you think that you have to be a Bitcoin developer to enjoy a Bitcoin conference or can a normal person learn something and have a good time here? Yeah, um, one, um, so conferences, and I would also include like meetups because I think there's a lot of good meetups in the world, which are like conferences, but they like could be like monthly or so, but like it's much, much smaller scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's definitely always good, great content. Like as one I can definitely recommend is the one in New York, the BitDevs meetup, mm -hmm. which is also now um, like the format um, is also um starting to expand in other cities. Mm -hmm. So um, check check on meetup.com. If, if you have one in your city, it's definitely worth uh, either going door or if, if nobody's doing it yet, establishing it. And um, mo most of what they talk about is like the current development, like they go to pull requests uh, that are currently uh, in, in, in review. And maybe also like all the developers, like if, if we have more people like reviewing these pull requests, maybe we catch like these giant bugs a little bit earlier. Now they they're like two year in production. And um, I think, yeah, just like 
getting getting more people uh, engaged in this uh, in, in, in is always a good thing. So, and um, I mean, talking about money all day long, you know, Bitcoin all day long is 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 quite exhausting. But uh, if you have the right folks in your city, uh, it, it's always more fun. And, and of course, you don't need our permission to start a meetup if there's not one in your area, but we're going to go ahead and give it to you anyway. So you now have the permission to go start a meetup. And I know I started a small meetup in Las Vegas. A couple of guys get together at the bar. We have dinner. We hang out. We talk about Bitcoin. And, and that's about it. It doesn't have to be the world's most successful meetup. It doesn't have to be any of these things. You just go to meetup.com, start a meetup, invite your friends, start meeting locally, and uh, you'd be surprised who turns up and how much you have in common with your fellow Bitcoiners. I, I know I met a lot of computer geeks and a lot of Linux geeks and so forth, uh, but when I met the B Bitcoin people, uh, they have this economic interest, they're into Star Trek, and they're into Linux and open source and all these other things that, of course, I'm into too. So we seem to have a lot in common, uh, even though we might not have even met yet. So. And especially with meetups, with smaller conferences, so to say, this is a great place on, on onboarding new people. Because even at the meetup, you do not have to have the technical experts there. You can have the everyone, every per lay person, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be an expert. Uh, there is no such thing as a Bitcoin expert. And uh, these meetups can be used perfectly to show the people how not only how great Bitcoin is and how easy and, and beautiful it is, but also how great the people are uh, that are supporting this new money. Um, so maybe have you, other than the conferences, have you also experienced uh, the power of onboarding through these conferences? Yes. Um, so conferences, yeah, for sure. Um, but also the hackathons that uh, we organized. Um, so from the very first hackathon we organized in 2015, um, I know like today there are still some people that are working together that just met at the hackathon and are working full time on different projects. Um, and that's like really, really amazing. And also some people that might just not know anything about crypto or about Bitcoin uh, would just join and discover, you know, that you can actually work on a very, very stupid idea, especially at a hackathon. That's encouraged. Like the more, like if it makes no sense, it's better. It's more funny to, to, to do it and to build it. And from there, they actually f like think out of the box and might figure out, you know, an actual thing that you might use or, or want Bitcoin for. Um, and, and that, yeah, that's great. Uh, also it's a great way when you have events like that, uh, maybe a little bit, yeah, bigger in size. So outside of the, the small meetups around a beer, um, sometimes you have like guests that you invite, especially for hackathons, you have like the mentors and stuff, but sometimes even for meetups, you have guests that, that come for a, a talk or something. Uh, it's a really, really great way to meet these people in person while sometime in bigger conferences like here or breaking Bitcoin or Bob, um, it's you know, maybe too noisy if you really want to meet, I don't know, Adam Beck, it might not be the best way to meet him. Like you can see him, you can maybe shake his hands, but he has other things to do as well. So when it's smaller in size, it's much more, you know, personal and you can exchange much more with the people. And I definitely had that experience at the San Francisco Bitcoin meetup where I got to meet a lot of, you know, famous crypto people and they would just come and give a speech and afterward we'd go to the bar and we'd all hang out and there you are suddenly chatting with a famous crypto person. So it's really great. Go ahead, Felix. Yeah, one thing I uh, we did uh, earlier in, uh, a couple of years ago in Berlin is what we had in the meetup, we would like have, uh, it started at seven, but we had like an introductory uh, half hour before seven. So all the people that are like very, very new to this, like just like learn how to like, install a wallet, get your first Bitcoin, right? Because uh, often we, like the, the, the information gap is unfortunately so often very, very large. Um, uh, what helps is obviously like if you have nowadays, you have the internet. I mean, I like the, the Bitcoin wiki wasn't very populated at the time when I joined Bitcoin. Uh, so it was like all scattered around. Now we have like Stack, Over, uh, Stack Exchange or One Stack Exchange. So it has tons of information now, but still like finding all these places for, for new person might, is definitely a, probably more overwhelming nowadays because there's just so much different information. So if you have like a local place where you can go to and like have it explained to you. So um, that definitely always helps like for, for new people like, to not be like intimidated by this vast amount of like, like it, it is its own world definitely, right? So, um, and, and often these meetups are like very technical and very advanced, um, but it's always good to like have the 
the onboarding process be more like simple and then obviously not everybody's gonna stay, stay and come back to next time but uh, if, if if there's definitely an introductory uh, lesson as well for like the very very beginners um, because there's always gonna be new people right uh, uh, um, so so they are always happy for this content you can definitely learn a lot about all the different facets of crypto at a convention like this. Uh, different kind of speakers. They have panels sometimes and debates and discussions. A lot of things can break out and even some things we might not know that we'd learn the first time at a conference. And you could be here. Uh, you could be a part of it. Uh, Kevin, do you think it's possible that there would be too many Bitcoin conferences or too many Bitcoin meetups? Okay, so we had a discussion with uh, Felix uh, outside, actually, just, just before. Um, in my opinion, probably not, as long as it doesn't dilute the, yeah, dilute the crowd. So if you, if you put some restrictions, such as, for example, focusing the topic, um, like we did at Breaking Bitcoin, or like Scaling Bitcoin did at the beginning, now they're a bit more general, but um, like when you focus your topic on something, then you can have like 10, 15 big conferences. If they have different topics, you will have the right crowd for each conference. Um, so I do really believe that is not a problem. And then you also need more um, onboarding type conferences that are accessible to everybody. And Balticoni Badger is great for that. You have the top people in the space, but you can, like my mom could be there and understand what the speakers are talking about. Uh, don't even try that at Building on Bitcoin. Like, don't try. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there is a need for more and more, and there probably is a need for even more technical. Um, I don't know if anybody's working on that, but like a very hardcore core dev, um, conference. Um, so yeah, I think there is definitely a need for more, uh, meetups actually. Yes. Um, you can always have more right now. We have a space in Lisbon, so I'm based in Lisbon now, and, uh, we open a space called the block. It's a cafe slash meetup slash office space. Um, and at the moment we have three meetups per week and they are all technical, not necessarily on Bitcoin only, but they have to be technical. So it's not about money. It's not about token. It's not about like anything like that. Only technical aspects, um, mostly blockchain related. So, um, but not always can be security can be, you know, um, a bit broader in the, in the specter of what we use as technologies and uh, yeah, three per week. We have people always. Well, that's amazing. I mean, and um, I want to say maybe there's a chance for the opposite of what you're saying. I know you say there's a need for a very technical conference. There also might be a need for a very non-technical conference. And especially, I would say, a low-priced conference. Uh, conferences are certainly expensive to put on. It does cost money to rent a room, to get the videographer, all these kind of things. Um, I still think 300 to 500 is kind of a sweet spot. I've heard of a lot of conferences at 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000. Yeah. And Ethereum. Ethereum, exactly, and ICOs and all these other things. And uh, their main focus at these conferences seems to be get rich quick. And uh, I've heard about a lot of those and seminars and things and multi-level marketing. And if only I could get a triangle scheme to work just the way it's supposed to, I'm sure it would all work out fine. Um, but until then, uh, maybe we should have some onboarding conferences where it's you know very basic. You get a wallet. Maybe you get a treasure for attending. Uh, maybe they show you how to use it. And we get a bunch of new people from the community to come. It's relatively low priced. And even that conference, I think, could be done, you know, even uh, quarterly or even monthly and, and move it around. Uh, obviously, it's going to take some organization and a structure and things. But these are the kind of things we need, a chance to try Bitcoin in person, a chance to meet other people who are trying Bitcoin in person and to all be skeptical together, uh, all to not believe and then to come out of it saying, you know, I got 20 bucks on this treasure now. It's a pretty interesting toy to me. Uh, maybe it's $30 in the future future or maybe it's less but uh, I always tell people it's like email in 1995 I didn't have anyone to email uh, but I learned how to use it just in case I would in the future and you know people haven't stopped e emailing me since uh, I, I wish they would but it keeps coming in I filter out the ICOs and things but they work around it now they found uh, new names for them so what I, you know. what I think about the um, saturation of like conferences and meetups I think it's like um, sure you might have that like regionally right but but I mean Bitcoin is supposed to be like a global currency right so so we have like five six seven continents how how you count them um and, and 190 countries so so you can definitely like organize something where like for your local community and that's that is what is community driven like like these these meetups and conferences so so i definitely think maybe like globally like like a few key large ones sure there might be like only like a, like a ceiling of that 
but for like the the smaller local ones um you you can definitely like organize it and uh, and I'm I'm definitely happy to see more and more of these uh, conferences being established in different countries maybe also like uh, first second third world countries whatever they call it right so so I think that uh I, I think like in, in South America, I actually see a little bit less development, and Africa actually, where I would love to see more. So, um, yeah, if you if you if you want to organize something like th th it's all community driven, right? Nobody needs to tell you to do it, but uh, you, you can do it. That's absolutely right. It is all community driven. There isn't a Bitcoin foundation telling you what you can and can't do. Everyone needs to volunteer and make their own way in this. Kevin volunteers for the Breaking Bitcoin. We volunteer for the World Crypto Network. We're all trying to spread Bitcoin in our own way. And I don't think we need a centralized hierarchical structure to tell us that we're doing a good job. I think we're doing a plenty good job on our own. And especially for onboarding new people. I, I also like the concept of uh, going to a non-Bitcoin conference or festival. Like, for example, in southern Germany, there was the Sonido Festival, a hippie vegan music festival. And we did a little donation drive here on the World Crypto Network. We raised 0.05 Bitcoin. Not too much, right? But that helped us go to this conference, talk to all these entrepreneurs selling their goods and services, help them set up their first Bitcoin wallet, and gave them a sticker. Bitcoin accepted here, right? And then we went to all the people attending the conferences, had a little Bitcoin booth, and we just were talking to them, showing them how it works, sending them a few Satoshis, not much for free. If they wanted to have more, they could sell us uh, you know, their goods and services in exchange for Bitcoin. And then they already had a place to spend their Bitcoin at the local conference. And this, you have a, a nice little niche um, localized group of many people that want to try this currency out, and now they can. And that is something that I think is perfect for onboarding the layman. Those people who would have never thought about using Bitcoin and never thought about attending a Bitcoin conference. They are there for the music. They are there for the food. And that way we can onboard these people as well. I think Max is absolutely right. We need to reach out to the audience that's not our own. As much as I like hanging out with Bitcoiners and talking Bitcoin with Bitcoiners, I know it's not really getting us anywhere because there are no new people. So if you're not going to bring in the new people, we need to find a way to reach them. And I think going to their conference, going to more general conferences like maybe a CES or a video game conference or something that's tangentially related, uh, but not directly related. I mean, we're we're plugging the direct one pretty good. The Bitcoiners hear about the Bitcoin, you know, so it's going good. Anything else, Max? Well, uh, the the question maybe for you guys again is that uh, what what is a, a nice ratio between really technical stuff and onboarding new people, or can you even say there's a ratio? Okay, yeah, this is this is a great question. Um, I so most of the the Bitcoin conferences are still organized in a completely voluntary way, so the organizers are not paid, the speakers are not paid, uh, and that's like pretty specific to Bitcoin. Uh, so People think and people actually have the right to complain when they're not happy with something in a conference. That's perfectly fine. Give your feedback. We are okay with that. Um, but do realize that this is time we all invest. Uh, and when I say all, it's the organizers, but also the speakers. Um, this is an insane amount of time that they are giving. Um, so usually the thing is just that the organizers pay for the flights and accommodation and flights are in economy class because we really don't have money. And that's how the the, the speakers come. Uh, and then, of course, we have sponsors because without that, the ticket would definitely not pay for uh, all the expenses. Um, so for the level of technical, I think it's just it's the organizers who should decide. Um, I really like hardcore technical stuff. So I organize technical stuff. Mm -hmm. If you want something more, you know, broad and trying to get the biggest Bitcoin conference, please do something accessible. Because as you can see, the Bitcoin conferences today, the big ones are like 300 to 400 people. Take Ethereum. The conferences are like 5,000 people. <laughs> it's what what is wrong? And and it is 10 times more expensive to go, well, maybe not, but let, let's say five times at least more expensive to go to an Ethereum conference. Paying a few thousands euro or dollar um, is, is the norm for an Ethereum conference. And there are thousands of attendees uh, in Bitcoin who are trying to get conferences at around 200, 300 euros. And we only get like 350, 400 people to come. We are not even completely full. We could get bigger if we wanted. It's just that we don't, 
have such a crowd of people going to conferences. So maybe that's still too expensive. I don't know. Oh, and I can also add something that might be useful for uh, the viewers. Um, so the cost of organizing a conference, uh, I can be transparent about that. So for building on Bitcoin and breaking Bitcoin, so I don't know here for Honey Badger, I don't know the budget. Um, but our budget is between 150 and 200,000 euro for organizing. And that's without anybody getting paid, right? And only uh, flights and accommodation for the speakers. So that's that's the amount of money. So say 200K and you get 300 people that pay something like 200, 300 euros. So you see there is a big lack of money in the accounting. So we really need sponsors as well. So thank you and please support the companies supporting us, uh, the, the sponsors, like buy the, their stuff, buy Trezor, buy Ledger, buy whatever. And volunteering really is the way of Bitcoin. We volunteer pretty much here at the World Crypto Network. We get some donations. We get a little Patreon, little YouTube ads. It's not a lot of money. Maybe Max will get a Purism laptop here if people keep donating there on the old tally coin. Um, but it's about the Bitcoin and it's about spreading the word about the Bitcoin. And I don't think we have an overarching organization with millions and billions of dollars to burn in a big fire uh, yet. Um, but there's all kinds of big fires being planned. I've certainly been to quite a few at Burning Man. Um, but, you know, the bigger the fire, the better it is. Uh, like that great scene in the, uh, the Dark Knight, the Joker movie, uh, where he just burns all the money because he can. It was, it was fun. Uh, no, I, I couldn't get a ticket this year. I haven't gone the last couple of years, uh, but I was there from 2006 to 2016. So I've been a couple of times. That was first time this summer and it was was quite uh, amazing I, I did I had no expectations mm. and I was, but I was pretty positively surprised and I saw like one guy with, uh, with uh, uh, that was the only crypto reference I had the whole week which was also <laughs> quite uh, um, interesting for me because I had no internet no I couldn't check any prices or news or crypto Twitter like he uh, didn't have a sign that said Bitcoin the end is near the end is near because uh, that would freak me out that, that not but there was some, some other guy um, um, dancing with a sign called uh, fuck your ICO which which I, <laughs> I thought was was pretty funny that's pretty good and uh, they do have a camp dogecoin at Bitcoin you might be able to check them out a lot of the uh, distributed dance party guys uh, set that up I got to hang with them one year it was fun to be at, Dan at camp dogecoin uh, but yeah Burning Man's a great place uh, you can do anything you want there nobody bothers you it's a very interactive city it is a city uh, it's a functional city there's a lot of organization there people are always like it's a hippie fest or whatever but there are lines there are streets there are grids there's a public utility group uh, there's a whole infrastructure that they've built and again we're going to need similar infrastructures here at bitcoin you know we don't have a lot of enforcers yet uh, but there is some security at this conference to keep people safe and to keep other people out and so on and so forth but uh, it takes that same kind of structure on a smaller scale to run a bitcoin conference that it does to run something big like burning man or a music festival like bonnaroo or glastonbury or whatever all of these things people come together to support the things that they like and they like music, or they like partying, or they like art, uh, or they like Bitcoin. And uh, I think it's great that we have these places where we can come together you know, in the meat space, in the physical space. And maybe that's part of it. The Bitcoiners are afraid to go outside these days. I, I know it's, it's getting scary and scary. People are like, I don't like to wear my Bitcoin hat anymore, and I don't wear my T-shirts outside. And uh, I, I know this guy's always about the wrench attack and this and that. And um, I don't think it's that bad yet. I think we can still hang out. And there's a lot of people that would love to talk about Bitcoin and that they don't even know that they'd love to talk about it yet. We talked to the Paxful guys just a few minutes ago and uh, they were talking about how so many people are trading gift cards for Bitcoin and Bitcoin for money for money for gift cards and all these kind of economies that are forming around Bitcoin. And maybe there's a Bitcoin business out there that you'd like to start or you'd like to accept it for your art or your crafts or your work. And uh, you just need that little push to get the wallet and to get set. And if we had more of these Bitcoin conferences and these meetups and these entry level events for everybody, uh, I think we'd be better off. I think there'd be more Bitcoiners. Uh, but thanks so much, guys, for the discussion. Thanks, Felix, and thanks, Kevin. Uh, anything that uh, people should know about the next Breaking Bitcoin conference, the website, anything like that? It's probably going to be breakingbitcoin.com again. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't have many details to announce yet. Um, just follow us on Twitter. That's where the announcements will be made. We are trying to not get it um, too big in terms of... Um, like this is a very technical conference, so it's really for the hardcore Bitcoiners. And usually the announcements are only made on Twitter. So if you're not on Twitter, you might miss out on Breaking Bitcoin. That's one of the things I should just say. Just follow the Breaking Bitcoin uh, account and you will have all the news there soon. 
Hardcore Twitter promotion at the end there. And uh, of course, shout out to my friend JJ for breaking Bitcoin. That was the funnest thing ever, even though some people didn't like it. And uh, Felix, it where can people... Every time we have like a big conference, there seems to be around the conference. It seems to like a giant bug being discovered. So be maybe we should have less conferences so we discover less bugs. <laughs> And I'd also say whenever Mad Bitcoins tours Europe, the price of Bitcoin just seems to go straight up. So maybe we should have more of that, too. Uh, but Felix, where can people learn more about your work? Do you have maybe are you working on a book about your travels around the world or a blog or something like that? Yeah, I guess I guess the book is a long term project, but uh, it's not too late to start. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Um, yeah, I'm, I think once I've reached like uh, like uh, 192 countries where I spend Bitcoin, then I'm going to write the book. Um, um, uh, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working on the fee uh, estimation stuff, uh, whatthefee.io. Uh, so if you want to save on your fees, uh, some wallets have terrible fee estimations, so you can you can save money there. Um, and yeah, follow me on Twitter at Felix Weiss if you, if you want to keep up with that. I'm also interested in UTXO management. Uh, so if you were interested into that, I think there can be a lot more optimization be done for all kinds of wallets. So yeah, reach out to me. All right, great. Uh, thanks so much, Kevin and Felix, for joining us. It was a great talk about uh, conventions and what we can do in the future.